being here. Absolutely brilliant to be here. It is brilliant to be here. I'm loving this apron. Do you know, I've been looking for excuses to wear this apron because I've just been wearing it around the house and nobody can see it. So uh, I thought, you know, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna put it on and wear it with pride right now. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> you did pretty well in MasterChef, didn't you? I did, I did do okay actually. Yeah, quarterfinals, um, and I would have liked to have got further. Um, but you know, you can't win everything. You can't win everything, and it's down to the judges at the end of the day. So uh, I felt that I did the best I could do. Um, right, well, it's brilliant because you've got so many strings to your bow now, haven't you? <laughs> Cooking, singing, writing songs, yeah. acting. <laughs> I know, brilliant. So what are you going to do for us today? Um, I'm going to do uh, a beautiful piece of Yorkshire fillet beef. I'm going to uh, glaze that with like an Asian glaze. So that's got sort of like ginger, chilli, um, garlic, um, quite sweet and sticky. It's going to be coated with some toasted sesame seeds. Um, and then we're going to accompany that with a nice puree. Uh, just a really, really simple one actually. Just ginger. Um, and carrot um, and then serve it with some lovely uh, bok choy and, and just, just keep it really fresh. I'm doing something quite simple, this is the very first time I've done a live cooking demonstration so uh, but I'm not using that as an excuse, hopefully it'll go well. No, it'll be fine. <laughs> but, um, but I'm keeping it very simple and really just uh, what I'm hoping is that you all maybe take away a recipe um, and some ideas that you can take away and do at home yourself because I'm just like you guys. Um, I'm not one of the Michelin star chefs, so I'm here, I'm passionate about food, love cooking, and um, like I say, hopefully I can entertain you all uh, now and later as well. So. Excellent. So, what's first then? Uh, we're going to start to prepare the carrots, because yeah. the carrots are going to take a little bit longer than everything else. We need to get them boiled in a little bit of milk, get them really nice and tender. So, we're going to start with... You can leave the skin on a carrot, you don't need to peel it. Uh, when it's a really good carrot, don't need to do much to it other than wash it. I got these from the market in York today, so uh, I'm going to just rinse them under the tap. Just make sure there's there no, no tap. There's no tap. <laughs> Nobody told me there was no tap. All right. <laughs> this is what happens. No, it's good. This is, this is how you know it's live. We're going to so, say. Yeah, but it, it looks pretty clean to me. Yeah, you can straight. you can brush any any soil off. Have you seen the chefs doing uh, doing the mushrooms anyway? When they forage the mushrooms, they just use a brush anyway to brush the the, uh, the soil off. So we're just going to chop these. Don't want them too big um, because I don't want them to take too long to boil. Mainly because I'm on a little bit of a time frame. So uh, we're going to just chop these into chunks because they're going to go in the blender eventually. Okay. So I just want to make sure I've got the milk on here. It is on. It's on. This one's on. Oh. Oh, it's gone off again. Hang on. <laughs> Induction hogs. Oh, I hate them. We, I, prefer, had, I prefer gas if I can, but... We've had this debate all... Ah, oh, don't worry. It's useful having you here for that, actually, so... Actually, it, it doesn't like your pan. Ah, be it. So I'm just going to get these carrots chopped up. And then we're going to get them in the milk, get them boiling up. Then we can move on to the next part of the dish. Right, that's on now. Thank you very much. It's okay. Okay, so these carrots are going to go in there. Don't need too many. I'm not going to fit too many in here. This is one of those ninja blenders. Really, really good for anything that you're making in terms of purees, sauces. Um, they literally blend everything up really, really fine. So they're absolutely perfect for that. So we're going to pop these in there. Now I've not seen carrots done in milk before. Really, what it does, it gives it a really nice creamy texture. I'm not going to use all of the broth here yeah. uh, in the puree, um, but it gives it a really smooth texture. Um, a lot of chefs pass the the yeah. puree through through like a sieve after after they've used it. Um, but what I'm going to do is just use the milk to to give that. So basically, it's a bit more of a day to day type of thing. Use the milk as a really sort of smooth mixture for the carrot, and it just gives a really good texture. So if you haven't tried it, give that a try at home. Um, okay, I'm going to get a teaspoon. There you go, in the corner. Next thing I want to do is put a little bit of cinnamon in here. The type of cooking that I do isn't like measuring everything perfectly. I taste along the way, um, use your palate, use your mouth, just try things as you go in, see how it goes. I then generally will just put about half a teaspoon of cinnamon. It's quite a strong flavour cinnamon, so you don't need a lot of it. Just put half a teaspoon in there, give it a good stir. That will just help with the flavour as well. Another really good addition to a, a carrot puree is some orange peel. 
Um, has anybody tried orange peel in a, in a puree before? Carrot puree. Really, really good. Really helps to bring the flavour out. So give that a try as well. So we're just going to give that a little bit and see how much comes out of there. Alright, I might try this one. That's it. Oops. <laughs> this is good. This is good. Okay, so a little bit of orange peel in there. It's all going to get blended up anyway, so it's okay. That's enough in there, that's fine. So just literally about a quarter of an orange worth of peel in there. Let that boil up and then we can move on to the next thing. Which we've got is? various different things in here. We've got some ginger, fresh ginger, always best. Um, you can use ground ginger, you can use powdered ginger if you like, but it doesn't have the same freshness, the same bite to it as, as fresh ginger. So if you can, and it's very readily available as well, you can get some fresh ginger from most shops, most uh, green grocers or your supermarket. Um, same with the chilies, you can use ready-made chili flakes if you like, but the best thing is fresh chili. So we're going to start on the glaze that's going to go on the beef. The reason why I'm starting on that now is because I need to get that blended up then I need to get it in a pan, reduce it down and that helps to thicken up the glaze and it helps to um, just really, it's a reduction really so it'll give it a lot more punch, a lot more flavour as well so we want to get that on first, the beef's not going to take that long to cook okay so let's prepare this ginger okay what I want to do also is add a little bit of ginger to this as well so this looks like your trusty tool, this thing. I like this tool. Yeah. I like this tool. Um, it's, it's very, very useful. <clears throat> Again, you can get these quite widely from most places nowadays. Um, and they're really, really good. They blend up pretty much anything. So get that going. Got a bit of ginger in there. And I will put this on blend this time, because I want this, I want this to be quite smooth, smooth as possible. I don't want to have to put it through like a um, one of those shoes. Yeah, because not everybody has that, you know, realistically. Who has one of those in their cupboard? So uh, let's just go with this, blend it up nicely. You want this boiling? Yes, please, that'd be great. Right. Okay. This is brilliant, isn't it? You could do with you at home, actually. <laughs> right then, so. Stop that blending, let's have a look. That looks just about perfect actually. Is we'll see, right? we'll see. That does look pretty perfect. I'm well pleased with that. <laughs> <laughs> I want to put some seasoning in there. So it's a bit, but it's gorgeous. Yeah, that's it. It's really, really nice. smooth, very really really simple to do, really easy as well. Quite nice if you just dip in pita bread in as well actually. You can put chilli in there, you can do what you want. Um, what I want to do is just grab one of these spoons. As I said before, tasting your food as you're cooking is really, really important. So try it, don't be afraid to get your spoon in there, taste it. That's really smooth. Quite a lot of spice coming through from the ginger, but that's okay. That's what I want. It does need some salt and pepper though. The reason why I leave the salt and pepper is because I really want the pure flavour of the carrot and the ginger because I always feel it, what's the word, skews my, uh, my taste buds a little bit putting the salt in um, and I've just got a bit more control over how much seasoning I'm putting in there. So I'm just going just gonna to use the salt, sea salt there, thank you. Just regular sea salt, I'm going to just put half a teaspoon in there, should be about right to start with. Again, I'll taste it again and I'll see and I'll make sure that the flavours have... Do you know, I don't want any pepper in there actually because I'm happy with the spice that's coming from, from it already. Get this in, blend it up again just a little bit, it doesn't take much. You can probably turn that down a little bit. Okay, no, it's this one. There, yep, yeah, that's good, thank you. Just, just wants it simmering. Yeah, actually, just, just simmering is good. Yeah, okay. Oh, that's perfect, that's good, that's good. Right then. So, just going to pulse this up a bit more. So, let's give it. Okay. Okay, so. And again, 
It's like I'm using about 20 teaspoons now, so that, that might be something to think about. <laughs> Obviously, in your own kitchen, everybody double dips everything, don't they? So you're all right, it's you that's eating it, you can do that. Um, but obviously, because other people might potentially eat in it, I'm going to use a fresh food each time, but... Yes! Yay! That is what you want. Good one. That little bit of salt just brings out the flavour. Oh, it does. Yeah, exactly. It brings out the flavour. So, we've got our glaze there. We've got our puree here, ready to go on the plate once I've got the beef going. We're going to get the beef going now because I want to cook the beef and I need time to leave it to rest. Um, if you don't leave meat to rest, it doesn't tenderise, it ends up bleeding all over the plate, it's just not a pretty sight. Um, meat's at its best when you leave it to rest. So we're going to get that going now. It doesn't take long to cook a fillet steak. I'm just going to uh, rinse my hands. Is that right in here? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Your griddle pan is nice and hot. Yep, fantastic. Perfect. Right, then let's get the, uh, the meat out here. So, yeah. I got this meat from a local butcher down in, uh, in York. Um, it's a fantastic butcher, the, uh, the farm's in Kilburn, so it's Yorkshire meat, really, really good stuff, really, really beautiful, ah, oh, the best, the best, okay. Right then, so, obviously when you're handling meat and that type of thing, um, keep everything separate, turn your chopping board over, we've got a fresh working surface, wash your hands regularly, that kind of thing. Thank you very much. Okay, so, I want to put some salt in there, on top of that. Don't, um, don't season your meat too early with salt, it really takes out the moisture. You're okay to do it just immediately before, before you start cooking it, um, but you don't really want to be doing it too early, so don't sort of prepare, prepare the meat and then do all of this other stuff. Just leave the meat be, let it get to room temperature, always cooks better as well, and then just put a little bit of salt and pepper on there. Really, really simple. Not doing anything too crazy with this. It's gonna be char grilled. Charring meat is fantastic because without anything special, you can get incredible flavor just, just by charring it. So it's a really, really good idea. Get a nice heavy char as well, um, if you can. So just a little bit of sea salt. Don't want too much on there because we've got soy going on there. Soy is quite salty already, but I do want to season the meat. Okay. We're going to put a little bit of pepper. I've got one of these ones that's got little holes in it so it's dead easy to pop in. And then we'll just use a little bit of olive oil just to coat the meat. And it just helps with the charring really. Um, you're going to have old juices in the meat anyway. You can use uh, butter and things like that in the pan. It depends on what you want to do with it. I just like sometimes to just do it really simply uh, with, with olive oil and that's, that's enough. Okay. So I'm going to just have, is there a spare plate? Yeah, are you going to use that one? I can use that one actually, yeah. That's right. I'll use this one. Leave that to rest. So that's just going to come out. This second steak here is a little bit thicker so I'm just going to leave it for a little bit longer. Um, and just see how things go. Okay. It's looking good, that can stay in there for a bit longer. Throw that off. Um, this one, yeah. no, this one can stay on for a little bit longer. Okay. Um, so yeah, so we've got this, we've got that. Has anyone seen these little squidgy bottles? They're actually really good. I know it seems a little bit chefy, doesn't it? But um, again, you can get these from most places and Nisbets is a really good uh, chef place. But you might be able to get it around here today. So obviously I want to support any other local stalls here. Um, so have a look around. These are really, really handy. If you are someone that, if you do dinner parties and you want it to just look a bit more special, you can just put your glaze in there. You can do all sorts of things on the plate. It's actually quite good fun. Um, you know, play about with it a little bit. And uh, you know, cooking should be fun. It should, you should experiment with it and, and you know, do different things. Um, okay, even if you make, you make take the mickey out of you, because mine do. <laughs> even if I just do like a dinner for myself, I'll literally I'll be like putting a dollop there and a, a smudge there and a smear here. So uh, yeah, <laughs> so yeah, that's just the way I am. Right, that's ready to come out. So I'm going to use this spatula again, same one I used before. And thank you very much, assistant. Right, leave those pieces of meat to rest. Um, they're going to tenderise, 
uh, the juices are gonna, some juices are gonna be released, but it means that you're not gonna get all of that red stuff on the plate when you're plating up, because that's never a pretty sight. Um, especially if you wanted to make it look a bit more special as well. Does this look like a bomb site, or is it not too bad? Is it? No, it's not too. Well, you didn't see the last one, did you? Video evidence now. Though, so. <laughs> Do you know? I'm probably not supposed to say this, but they did make me look like I was well messy on MasterChef. <laughs> I'm just a regular person, so you know, obviously, you got your you got your stuff here and there. Right, these are ready to take out, so I'm going to pop them in this bowl because this bowl's only had raw chili in, so it's fine. Raw um, one There we go. Mm. Do you want a bigger one? Oh, if you've got one, that'd be good. Yeah. There you go. Thank you very much. Right then, so we can take this pak choy out of here. It's a little bit of charring on the leaves, that's absolutely fine. That'll just add to flavour. Um, but you want them to still remain green. So there's still a nice bright green colour. You don't want it to go that sort of muddy green where you overcook things any vegetable really you want it to still be a little bit al dente have a little bit of bite to it um, and then it'll complement the dish so we've still got that reducing down that's absolutely fine i'm just going to clear the decks a little bit so that we can um, start to plate the food up make it look nice and just get, enhance everything really so i'll just pop these on here does anyone have any particular questions at all <laughs> no no i seem to have talked enough <laughs> You can come and chat to Jess when uh, you taste. <laughs> As we always say, it's at your own risk. We have to say that. Yeah, at your own risk. You are able to um, <laughs> come and taste. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, that'd be great. Thank you very much. Right, let's just move this out of the way a little bit. It's always good to clear the decks a little bit so you can start to sort of plate the food up and that kind of thing. So. Let's have a look at this. It's looking good. Get a spoon out here. See this, this is now a lot thicker. It's reduced down to about half. That's what you want. You want it to look kind of, sort of almost like glistening as well. Um, you want it to be a bit thicker, a little bit like a syrup really. Um, but we're gonna keep that going. I think I moved that off and then it's probably gone off. Oh no, it's still going. It's still going. We can turn that up a tad actually. And just, just have to get it bubbling yeah, a little bit. So sesame seeds, you want to toast Yeah, we're going to toast those next, that's it. They don't take very long to do. The sesame seeds are going to go on the surface of the meat. So I'm going to paint the glaze on the meat and then sesame seeds are going to go on top of that. They add a little bit of crunch, they add really lovely flavour. Um, and also with anything sort of, the sort of more Asian variety, like the pak choy, um, which are very commonly in Asian dishes, um, the sesame seeds really lend themselves really well to the, to the flavour. So, we're going to get that, is that one already on there? That's on. That one's on. Yeah. Fantastic. You don't need any oil, you don't need anything in there, just the sesame seeds. As soon as you start to see them go sort of golden, golden brown, just toasting nicely, you can literally take them out. They don't, you can eat sesame seeds raw, so you don't need to do it for very, very long. Uh, it just enhances the flavour and brings the flavour out. So we're going to just put a little bit in there. I want to put enough in there because I've got two full steaks there. I want enough to coat both sides of each steak. So make sure that you toast enough sesame for that. Because you don't want one half, uh, half coated and one not. <laughs> Nobody wants that. Yeah, so we've got that going. Is everybody happy with everything so far? Is, is it's looking good. Out? It's Fantastic. looking good. I'm actually really enjoying myself. I was so nervous about today. Really, really nervous. I was like, what type of oven is it? What pans will it be? You know, but actually, it's, no, it's really, good. Yeah, you all seem very friendly. <laughs> no one's thrown anything at me yet. No eggs have thrown at me, so it's all good. <laughs> so we're stuff. just going to wait for these to, to toast. It's on high. That's perfect. Oh, yeah, it's hot. Ah. Yeah, yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, it's on high. Brilliant. So they will be toasting very, very shortly. And as I said, they don't take very long at all. Um, they really don't take very long at all. Um, just to let you know as well, as well as performing this evening um, musically, I think it's going to be on this stage, is it? Yeah, on this stage with the wonderful Cal Wynn who's here filming me a little bit. Um, he's going to be playing on a bit of percussion as well, so I'm a bit of a jack of all trades. Um, I'm also going to be at York Food Festival because I'm from York. Um, and I'm going to be doing some demos, demoing some different dishes and that type of thing, different to today's dishes. So if you want to see me do anything else, uh, York Food Festival in September, that's a beautiful one as well. Obviously, 
it, this is fantastic though. this is massive this it's is really, it's really good you can get much better than this but but york is still a really lovely one as well fantastic thank you look at this doing it all for me love it <laughs> nearly done really and they're toasting nicely if you overdo it they'll just go black and then you're gonna have to chip it away so we don't want to do that but it's quite fun to watch quite therapeutic actually <laughs> Look, look, I think they're done, don't no, they? they're definitely done. Right, let's take them on. You see them flying everywhere. Right, so they're ready. Perfect. I can leave that in the pan because once I've coated the meat and I've glazed the meat, I literally can just dump the meat in there. Really, really simple, really easy. Having said that, it's a little bit risky. So what I'm going to do is just take another pan because you've got to remember the pan's still hot, so um, it's going to keep cooking them. So it's probably better actually to, once they're cooked, put them into a cool pan or, a, or on a plate, some of them you can easily uh, dunk the meat into. And this can go off as well. Am I turning this off right? Uh, no, just here. There we go, we've oh, done it. Bless you, thank you. Right then, so, let's hope I don't melt this plastic by putting this in. I'm gonna do this over the sink and just decanter this uh, glaze into here. Beautiful. Is that all right in there? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, so we've got the glaze in there. We've got your puree here. We've got your pak choy there. And then we've got these beautiful sesame seeds. Bring the steak over here. They can't really see that there, can you? So let's, let's move it, it over here. here. Yeah. I want people to see what I'm doing. So let's get a knife here. That will do. Just going to chop the meat in half. That's okay. A little bit overdone for my liking, slightly, but it's all right. It's still, to some people, that still would be more medium, I would say, than medium rare. But then I suppose more people will want to try it now. <laughs> so, so let's go with that. Right, so let's put that in there. We've got your sesame seeds. We've got your glaze. All you need to do with this glaze is just, whoops, Daisy, sorry. <laughs> sorry. I knew something like that was going to happen. I think it's because it's still hot actually. There we go. First time I've used one of these squidgy bottles as well. So I think what I might do is uh, let's keep it simple. Let's keep it simple and just spoon it on. Okay, so it doesn't matter how you put the glaze on the meat really. Just spoon it on if you need to. Make sure it's all coated on there. You get a lovely colour to it. And it's really just going to add flavour and, and allow the sesame seeds to stick to it as well. Okay. Done one side and we can just turn it over to the other side. Make sure you've got plenty on there. As I said, I would have really probably done this meat a little bit more rare than this. Um, but as I said, it, the, the process is the same. Okay, so we're just going to dunk this meat in the sesame seeds, bring this over here. And then just see how it just beautifully... Oh, that's lovely. That's, that's really nice. It's a lovely visual as well. Yeah. For that. So we're just going to pop that on the plate. Okay. Yeah, looks good. So pop that on there. And then we can add a little bit more of the glaze as well. Just around the meat on the plate. The longer you leave the glaze to boil as well and reduce, it gets thicker and it gets uh, more and more flavourful. So again, try it, taste it, um, make sure you don't burn yourself obviously, but, but try it and taste it. See see how it is. If you want it to be more intense, you can make it more intense. If you want it to be uh, thinner, you can make it that way. Okay, so we've got that on there. Then all we're going to do with this is literally just place a little bit of the pak choy on here just nicely on the plate there. Oh, thank you. Brilliant. And then all we need to do now, a little bit of the carrot puree on there. I don't think you need too much of the carrot puree because it's quite strong. It's got um, sort of heady notes of ginger in there. Um, but it's, as I say, it's just a really nice addition to the dish. So I just want to put a little bit on there. And then a little bit here. So you've got colour, you've got texture, you've got flavour. And there you go. 
Jess, that looks a pretty as a picture. Full of amazing beef with garlic, pak choy, uh, toasted sesame seeds, and uh, garlic and ginger carrot puree. Come, everybody, this is lovely. I can't wait to taste it. Come on and have a, have a quick taste of it, and then we'll get ready for the next uh, demonstration. And if you want to talk to Jess, come and do, come and do so. And then... Uh, I can pop some more of this beef on there if you want. It's Ben from Minster FM. I hope you're having a fantastic day at the Malton Food Lovers Festival. This stage is sponsored by In Travel. The In Travel team are just by the side of the stage. If you go and see them, then you could actually be winning a short break to Portugal, courtesy of In Travel. Oh my, okay, so everybody's coming in for a bit of the steak. Here they come. So get involved, get involved. Once you've got a bit, just step back to somebody else's opportunity. So Jess's steak is available on the table right now. Enjoy, enjoy, enjoy. Dig in. Don't forget as well, plenty more entertainment around the Malton Food Lovers Festival. There's the Green Energy Pop-Up Picnic Area.